Hey guys, this is Ludwig with another Corona tutorial and today we're gonna take a look at displacement. So I've prepared a scene, it's just a simple plane, deformed, some water, few stones. And in this part of the tutorial, what we're gonna try to do is uh, to make the surface appear as some gravel, basically covered with a uh, little stones and we will use displacement for that. All right, so uh, first thing we're gonna do to create a displacement is to apply kernel displacement modifier uh, to our plane. So I'm just gonna go here, select kernel displacement modifier. And uh, the next thing we need is some sort of displacement texture. So I'm gonna grab a map, go to gravel and use this displacement. I'm gonna grab a kernel material, just plug this in the diffuse for now and we're gonna set up uh, proper tiling so our uh, st gravel stones are the size we want them to be so let's apply it check it out and we obviously see they are way too large so let's try tiling 10 by 10 30 by 30 oh, 50 by 50 should should do the trick and let's also lower the filtering once this is set up, I'm just going to disconnect this, darken the color slightly. Let's call this our gravel. And let's just go ahead and try to plug this map to our displacement modifier. Mapping is already set up. And if we now just try to render, we can see that our that our ground is nicely displaced and uh, so this is this is it for for the first step but now we can work with the displacement further uh, first thing i'm gonna try to do is increase the resolution so we have uh, some more space to see the r detail in and render again And what you can see is that uh, with uh, the default quality value of uh, of two, it's a pixel size. So basically, uh, it's average size of the of the edge uh, that's that's going to be tessellated. So basically, uh, the lower lower the value is, the better the di displacement quality is, and. Uh, at the default value of two pixels, we can see we have some nice detail in the front, but as, as the distance fades away, you can see we are really losing much detail. So obviously uh, the first thing you would, you would uh, try to do is to decrease the size, to increase the quality and uh, prevent the detail loss in the distance. So if I do this, uh, you will observe that uh, the displacement calculation will take a lot longer so let's just uh, go ahead and see how how long it will take on this small resolution. Keep in mind, this is still just uh, 900 by 506 pixels. Uh, most of the time you will work probably on the larger image. So uh, the time it takes to displace uh, for something like full HD resolution may be even longer. So as we can see, it took uh, 40 seconds just for the displacement calculation. You can see we have quite a bit of detail in the distance, but obviously 40 seconds for just so tiny resolution, that's, uh, that's not a really reasonable time. So what we're going to do is to save this image for comparison. And uh, the trick here is uh, most of you probably do not know, but uh, both V-Ray and Arnold, what they do is basically uh, they will automatically create normal or bump mapping uh, in the distance and uh, fill in the detail using just normal modification, not by a real tessellation. As you can see, I've, I've made uh, two screenshots of V-Ray manual 
and uh, in V-Ray manual you can see uh, the phrase automatically apply a normals map that represents the normal of the perfect displaced surface which will make the surface look a lot more detailed than it actually is so V-Ray when you're when you're using both 2D or 3D mapping will always generate some normal map to aid the displacement and prevent the detail loss in the distance in Arnold, there is an auto bump feature that basically do, does the same thing as you can see. Auto bump puts the high frequency of displacement map into a bump attribute so that you do not need as many subdivision iteration values. It is enabled by default in the Arnold attributes of the displacement node. So both of these renders uh, by default will create normal map or a bump map to aid with the displacement. Unfortunately, at the moment, Corona does not do this, uh, but we can do it manually. So if we now actually increase the size uh, even larger than default, so let's say three pixels and try to render. You can see now uh, the geometry calculation or, or the displacement calculation took only four seconds. That's 10 times less than one pixel. But obviously you can see we've lost quite a bit of detail. So if I now uh, go to the RAM player, if I didn't close, uh, close it by accident, which I'm afraid I did. Well, anyway, uh, what we can do now is to just take this map and this is our displacement map and let's plug it also in a bump slot of our material and uh, let's let's increase the bump value to something like four and now we render you can see we we've, we've got all that high fre high frequency de detail back both in the foreground and in the background. So if we have some close-up objects in the foreground, we will still see that plastic relief. But uh, uh, in in the in the distance, we we won't spend so much computing power on tessellation. Yet we will still get some some sort of detail. We can also even lower the filtering of the bump map to make the detail even more pronounced. And again, we are spending just four seconds on the displacement calculation. So let's just stop it here. Let's now open our RAM player, load this in. Now disconnect the bump map, set it back to one. Make sure our RAM player is still here so we didn't close it. Render again. And now we will compare uh, the pixel size free with uh, bump mapping enabled to pixel size uh, one without bump mapping. Again, it's gonna take about those 40 seconds. So as you can see, it, it's really not reasonable time, uh, reasonable computing time for the displacement, especially for, for such a low resolution. All right, and this is our result with the displacement set to extremely, extremely precise, extremely high quality value. And let's add it up for comparison. And as you can see, left is our, our bump map and displacement, right is our high quality displacement. Obviously you can see there's some, de there's some difference in the overall shading but uh, the solution on the left basically using using higher uh, screen size volume combined with a bump mapping is a lot more reasonable than uh, using just the displacement to get all the detail you need so uh, for the production use case i would i would keep uh, keep displacement size to the default which is two pixels and 
if you need uh, if you need basically more detail i would consider using the bump mapping so this is this is what you should take away from this lesson uh, if there's not enough detail in the displacement uh, at further distances do not just go ahead and decrease this value but first try to apply some bump mapping uh, you can either use your displacement map in the bump slot as well or if you have specialized bump map for your material that's even better so in the next lesson we will take a look at how to apply some technique to get uh, details in something like bricks so see you then